on the Prepper Broadcasting Network. Hello, everyone out there in Internet Radio Land. This is Dave Jones, the NBC guy. How you doing today? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Monday, Monday, Monday. It is a great day. Yes, at my age, every day is a great day when you wake up. <laughs> yes. Oh, I, I have uh, an email from a listener and a friend. And I'm going to answer some questions about quail. The questions were all about quail, and we raised quail here at one time. And um, so I, I answer them. But wow, what a great weekend on PBN. And we have a new podcast, and it's up, and it's awesome. Uh, raising values. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you got to listen to it. It's kind of uh, well. It was it's the the um, the best part of the matter of facts, guys. Let's put it that way. <laughs> anyway, you got to listen to it. Brand new podcast. It was fabulous. Um, and I I I think um, that PBN is just going to grow and grow and grow. So, you are you are in on the ground floor of a unbelievable juggernaut in the prepping arena. And, uh, <clears throat> gosh, when the intrepid commander put me in the same, same vein as uh, Stephen Mencken and, and Chin Gibson, I was... Uh, I was shocked. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm the NBC guy. And I'm not, uh, you know, the preacher guy. I mean, I have a relationship with God, and I make no bones about it. I've been a sinner most of my life, and I'm a, I'm a Christian in progress. Uh, you strive to do better every day, but well, well, pfft, I'm, I'm getting all over the place here. Let me get back to the email. So the question was on quail, and uh, I, the reason we recommend quail here at the Jones Homestead, and there's there's lots of pros and cons, okay? So one of the big pros is the quail are easy, <coughs> They're easy to take care of. They require very small amount of space. Okay? They they grow quickly to maturity. You know, six, eight weeks, you have a full-grown quail. Um, now, we incubated our eggs in an incubator. We have never, to my knowledge, had a quail go broody. Okay? They just pop these eggs out all over the place. Now, maybe if we would have made nests and nesting areas for them, they, they might have done it. But quail, they just run around and pop eggs out. <laughs> uh, the ratio, one male to about 10 females. And uh, they are brutal. They are rough with each other, so you don't want to get less than that, because um, they'll the males will peck and the heads of the other quail, and we've we've had that happen a few times. They're they're they, they in other countries they have quail fights, you know, like cock fights, uh, because they are so brutal with each other. Uh, we use the uh, Japanese quail. Uh, they're about this, a little smaller than the Bob White, so that's the breed that we used. And uh, like I said, they're very easy, require a very small amount of space. Uh, you do need to give them a higher protein of food, but you can augment this by using worms, mealworms, and things like that. 
So if you if you can't get the higher protein food, and they take really fine food, they you can't give them scratch. It's too big. So uh, we have had you know times where we got clearance food and ground it up in a coffee grinder to make it smaller for them, and they ate it just fine. Never harmed you know the egg production and. Uh, they will produce eggs for two years, pop one out a day every day for two years straight. Quail eggs are five times as nutritious as as regular eggs. So, um, and if you get too many males, let's say you incubate the eggs, you get too many males, well, you let them grow up as soon as, uh, as, soon as they start producing eggs. You can put some of the males in freezer camp, and I'll tell you, two or three quail in a in a soup is fantastic. Uh, you can roast them in an oven, and they're easy to process too. You can process. I think we did one every six minutes, and we did this for an hour, so that was like uh, sixty. 60 quail? 60 quail in an hour? 10 quail? Well, it, it, was, it was quick. It's quick. And um, we, we started keeping the uh, wings, and then we realized there's not enough meat on the wings to even bother with. So we just kind of, you know, strip them and, and get them, and psh, you're done. You're done. Let's see. Let me see if I missed any of these questions here. Well, and the reason we went with the Japanese quail is because they were available where we are, and they do well in our climate. So we're kind of uh, mm, not cold climate, not hot. We're in between. So we're, you know, northern Virginia up on the mountain. So it's kind of, you know, it's not... Maine or Buffalo, New York or anything like that, but it's not uh, the Carolinas either. So it's kind of in between. And right now, if you could get fertilized eggs off of someone that's raising quail, that would be your cheapest uh, way to go. And uh, get you a good incubator and just incubate your own. And they're so, so easy to take care of. You uh, you know, a large cardboard box, you can get <laughs> 25, 30 quail. And um, we used wood chips. You can use straw, but wood chips, you know, you get them for two bucks at uh, Tractor Supply, and they last a long time. My pens, I made these pens two feet by two feet by two feet uh, because I didn't want to cut the plywood you know, so I just like half the, the plywood and I made these pens. So these plywood pens were eight feet long, two feet wide and two feet high. Uh, just because, you know, less cutting, less measuring. And they had plenty of room. Now, some people will say that they're if you give them too high of a space, they'll try and fly. And they do try and fly. Uh, out uh, and they, their necks are very fragile and they'll say that they break their necks now we have never had a quail break its neck so I don't know I don't know where that's coming from but their, their necks are fragile yeah and if you can find someone that's raising quail in your area you will get a, a breed um, that you know, is good for your area. And like I said, the Japanese ones is the ones that we we raised, had no trouble with them. Um, they were fantastic. A little smaller than the Bob White quail, but Bob White's, you know, they're, they're, they exist in the wild, so um, they can live. Uh, you might want to get yourself a, a fish net. Okay, because if these things pop out of your, they they get away. They'll pop out. They'll they'll shock you and just try and fly away. And and the fishing net 
helps you catch them once they get out on the ground because they get out on the ground they'll start running and they're pretty camouflaged and they'll get in the weeds and you'll have a hard time finding them now uh a lot of them are uh, you know they'll come back to the flock so they see the flock as their protection so if you just let them go they'll come back and they'll be underneath your pen somewhere um they won't run off. So, and they're, they're, they're quiet. You know, only the males go, and it's, it's not even like a, a crow that you would get from a chicken. Okay. It's, they make soothing, cooing sounds. If you, if you live in an apartment or a condo or something like that, you can actually keep quail. I mean, they're, that's how easy they are. And then every few weeks, just change the chips out. And what we did was we shoot them to one side of the pen, scoop the chips out, and then shoot them to the other side of the pen, scoop those chips out, and then put new chips in. And it was pretty easy, pretty easy. Like I said, the only downside is they take a higher protein feed okay so you're gonna have to get the game bird feed you know it's 20 percent protein or higher and um, and you can also rate we raised mealworms and uh, crickets <laughs> they you should see them when we threw a cricket if you have lots of crickets in your area and you can catch crickets, man, that's funny as heck. They're like little football players. You throw a cricket in there, they'll grab it up and run with it. <laughs> yeah, there. I hope that answered all your questions about quail and what we did. If you have any more questions, just email me and you know who you are. <laughs> uh I got a little bit of runny nose here. It's a change in weather. Jeez, who can who can keep track of all this pollen and uh, weather changing? So, PBN family, what's going on? Well, Putin's moving nuclear weapons into Belarus. Uh, you know, he's doing what he needs to do to win this thing. And he could care less about the rest of the world. He's got uh, China and Iran you know, have, have both got his back. So he's not worried about the rest of the world. We, <laughs> we created this alliance for him because of the sanctions that we put in place. And well, that's the world as we know it. I guess there's some kind of huge, uh, demonstration or coup in Israel going on right now. I don't know. Um, you know, I kind of just skimmed the news this morning, got the highlights, and I'm not letting any of it bother me. I have a list of things I got to do today, and that's what I'm focused on. So, um, haven't heard back from James on the Preppers Live tonight, but James, if you're listening, I'll join you if the warden says I'm allowed to. <laughs> Eight o'clock. So... But maybe James wants to give us a night off. and uh, But there's so much, so much going on. So much we can talk about. Holy cow. Aiden, Aiden's show. Uh, he, he puts so much down in such a short period of time. You're like, whoa, 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 whoa. What was that about the fungus? <laughs> hey, we could talk about that. That, uh, that show, The Last of Us. We and we watched it. We watched all of it. It was interesting. Uh, the most interesting part that I found was uh, most of the problems they had was from other humans and not the uh, zombie-like.